Good afternoon each and everyone. So our topic for today is all about lake fisheries manage, management. Lakes including reservoirs formed by man-made dams vary from large. Example, Great Lakes, Caspian Sea. Too small, example, Unimal farm pans, minuscule alpine, alpine poles. Maintaining at least reasonable good water and habitat quality is absolutely essential to nourishing healthy fish populations. Population control and abatement, while typically outside the direct purview of fisheries managers, are essential if management goals are to be achieved. Large lakes fisheries management involve primary, primary assessing, selecting fishing or harvesting levels that are suitable. And the other techniques, it includes the intentional introduction of non-native species. Example is the Pacific salmon to the Great Lakes or control of unintentional and undesirable introductions Example, yun yung mga silang preys in the Great Lakes. Management of many, many small lakes tend to be, the, to be the responsibility of a single govern, governmental or non-governmental entity. Greatly simplify fisheries management. Uh, the large lakes, on the other hand, tend to exhibit more complex management involving a uh, multiple agencies, such as interjurisdiction decision-making greatly compound fisheries management, pro management problems. For example, within the five nations surrounding the Capian Sea, managing the sturgeon fishery, uh, which is uh, they produce a highly value caviar, uh, sustainable has been uh, difficult it's simply because of uh, the lack of a single the lack of single infer enforceable management plan as a result of Caspian Sea sturgeon population have dropped 90% over the past uh, several decades so the distrib the distribution and number of Philippine lakes. There are over 100 uh, recorded lakes in the Philippines. The region with the most number of lakes in southern Tagalog, followed by the Cordillera Autonomous Region. Within the southern Tagalog region, the province of Laguna has the most number, lake, number of lakes. Based on the physiochemical and biological criteria, the status of the 36 lakes, 36 lakes with the areas of 100 hectares and larger in the Philippines was assessed. Lakes that are in a good condition have water quality within acceptable standard and no sedimentation, no overfishing stress. Kung ating titignan ang ating uh, mga lawa or lakes ay nanganganib na dahil sa pollution na nangyayari sa atin and also the sedimentation and at overfishing pressures. So the status the status of major Philippine lakes. If you can see uh, 41. Uh, 7 of the lakes are in a good condition, 51.5% are threatened and 2.7% ay nanganib na status of major Philippine lakes. If you can see, mas madami yung uh, T or tinatawag na threatened, G is a uh, good condition and C is the critical conditions. There are 41.7% of the lakes are in a good condition, while the threatened is 55.5 and 2.7 is nanganib or nasa critical na 
condition. Overall is 100%. Diadromous fisheries management. Diadromous fisheries are those characterized by a life cycle of either spawning in freshwater environments and expanding their adulthood in marine environments. Anadromous species or spawning in marine environments and expanding adulthood in freshwater environments. Catadromous species. The adromous fisheries represent unique challenge to fisheries manager because target species often cross multiple jurisdictions unless management efforts are well coordinated the com combined effect of decisions by different jurisdictions can result in serious depletion of these resources. So, ang pagkakaiba ng tatlo, diadromus, anadromus, and dacatadromus. So, yung, ana, yung anadromus ay nagmamigrate, uh, nagmamigrate from salt water at nag-i-spawn sa fresh water. Samantalang ang katadromus ay parang uh, nagbaliktad sa ana. Ang kata is nagmamigrate uh, from fresh water at nag i sa sea. So, ang diadromus naman uh, is to refer to the to the fish that migrate between fresh and salt. So, ang example sa anadromus is yung mga anggila, yung mga Atlantic salmon, and also lamprey. So, sa katadromus naman, yun yung mga eels, the American eel and European eels. So, anadromous fish, example naman dito, yun yung mga salmon, American shad, striped bass, smelt, and sturgeon are important species commercially and recreationally many. Many rivers no longer support major spawning runs of a anadromous. Coastal fisheries management. The marine environment immediately adjacent to the land supports coastal fisheries and includes near shore marine, estuaries, and intertidal ecosystems. An estuary is a coastal water ba body of water that has a free connection to the ocean and alternative alternately with the tides exhibit characteristic of both freshwater and saltwater environment because uh, the marine biota move into coastal river the lower intertidal beaches and rivers are often included a coastal fisheries intertidal environment in particular Particularly important as nursery areas for the juveniles of many vulnerable saltwater fish species. Uh, the coastal fisheries present an array of challenge to the fisheries manager. Human population density tends the higher along the coastal and this means that aquatic coastal habitat is likely to be substantially altered. Example is the sea walls, dredging, draining, and also building or polluted. Example from the municipal and industrial waste, ship discharge and runoff. One of the greatest challenge in managing coastal fisheries is the loss of coastal wetlands. These wetlands provided habitat for many adult fish and self shellfish and are also essential breeding and rearing areas. So, uh, one of the most impo important uh, in coastal areas is uh, the occupation of the people living in the coastal areas and inland uh, because their 
there is much uh, water in their areas and also the things they eat at yung mga necessary na they easy to uh, catch, catch fish or get fish for daily life and some people uh, sell fish to earn money so it is uh, important uh, parang yun yung mga uh, kinabubuhay nila yung mga ng, yung mga nasa coastal areas open seas or high seas fisheries management open seas fisheries are those that operate away from the coast and often outside of any nation's territorial waters the two general categories of fish that are target in such fisheries are the pelagic or open water dwelling fishes and the dimersal or bottom dwelling fishes. The pelagic fish species tend to feed and travel near the ocean surface. Dimersal fish species tend to live on the continental shelves closer to shore. Tuna and swordtail. Uh, example uh, are the commercially important pelagic species while wild cod hay Plunder and toothfish are important timbersal species. The inadvertent capture of non-target species called bycatch is a serious management challenge in many fisheries, but especially for open ocean and coastal fisheries. Perhaps, perhaps a third of the catch is discarded by fish fishermen or non-marketable. Uh, by catch may be the young or valued sport of commercial fish species or important food source for a sport of commercial fish species. Shrimp trawler, for example, catch and discard large uh, quantities of small fish while pursuing the much more valuable shrimp. The, var the various types of fishing gear used by commercial fishermen can injure and often kill. Can protect uh, protected animals such as seabirds, the marine mammals, and sea turtles. For example, the direct catch of dolphins in in and tuna fishing has led to consumer by cut and a demand of dolphin sales. Tuna products, likewise device that effectively excluded turtles from capture have been incorporated into the trolls used by commercial shrimp fishermen. The importance of the open ocean uh, it can produce over half of the world oxygen and also absorb 50 times more carbon dioxide carbon dioxide than our atmosphere and also have an advantage of open ocean in aquaculture because it is provide more ecological space for production yields can expand to meet the increasing market uh, demands for fish. Offshore facili facilities also avoid many of the conflicts with other marine resource, resource users in the more crowded inshore water, though there can still be used user conflicts offshore. Coral reef management. Coral reefs management facing unprecedented traits from a combination of local and global stressors. At the same time, coral reefs are increasing recognized as a vital foundation for economic development, community, well-being, and social resilience. Effective management or coral reefs has become an important focus for coastal communities and 
a range of strategies and available to help protect reefs biodiversity and facilitate sustainable use so sa coral reef i this is important to protect our coastlines from damaging effect of wave actions and tropical storm and it is it is provide habitats and shelter for many marine organisms and also uh, the source of nitrogen and other essential nutrients for marine food change uh, and also it is important uh, to the global environment and also into the economy because healthy coral reefs contribute to fishing and uh, tourism providing uh, millions of jobs and contributing the economies all over the world so the into the scientists develop important drugs from coral reefs organism as treatment for cancer arthritis and also viruses dako tayo sa mangrove management mangrove can be managed for a combination of various objectives key service and products provided by mangroves include goods product example yung mga, yun, yung mga timber charcoal fuel wood and sanan wood resources naman yung mga fruits, wildlife, capture fisheries, mariculture, it protection and ecotourism. Despite being one of the most productive ecosystems in the world with huge benefits in terms of climate change, mitigations, adaptions, and enhanced reliance, mangroves continue to be degraded, degraded and lost of part of the problem is the lack of consideration given to the social aspects of mangroves management including governance textures and land use planning example ng mga mangroves uh, mangroves trees help from a natural barriers again by violent storm surge and floods river and land sediment is trapped by the roots, roots, which protects coastal coastline areas and slow erosion. This filtering process also prevent harmful sediment reaching coral leaves and seagrass meadow. And also the importance of mangroves uh, conserving mangroves or importance of conserving mangroves. Uh, it protects to the coastal areas from erosion by creating a bower zone, filtering and pacifying tidal flows, and can even reduce the damage and loss of uh, life by tsunamis. And also, it is important to ensure that sustainable mangrove management is included in integrated planning of coastal zone the primary aim of a mangrove management strategy strategy should be to maintain the health of the remaining mangroves ecosystems and reduce the rate of mangroves 